All right, where's Etika at? What's even the point of, of like, you don't do this based off like a hundred subs. You do this based off of like obscurity. Under a hundred views, you probably, yeah, this, this iceberg sucks. Honestly, you should not do it by sub count because the vast majority of the mainstream still doesn't know about Ryan's world. You went straight from 25 million all the way down to a million. Damn. Again, I don't know how you put Kurzgesagt on the same level as Beluga. He's definitely way above Beluga in terms of like, being well known. There's no, also no reason to put incognito mode along with internet historian. Who's SML? I've never heard of this channel. Who's, uh, oh, that's the king of random. Bro, look, internet historian, internet historian live. There's no, like, if you don't know who internet historian is, you won't know who internet historian live is. There's no reason to put them here. And story mode. You put four channels of the same guy on here. And pyro live. And beluga jr. I like that Crackback is in here. I'm subscribed to him, man. Isaac Y. Um, I don't know any of these channels, though. Yeah, interesting. I don't know why the hell this is here. Chugga Conroy. I haven't heard that name in years. Who else would... How many subs does uh, Casey Nice to have? Is he not at like 10 mil plus at this point? But then again, I mean, he's hardly a YouTuber anymore. He's more Hollywood than YouTube. Yeah, 12.6 mil. Remember when him and like Jake Roper literally sold like their app to CNN, Beam? Like they're doing... CNN shit. He sold his first show to HBO. He's like Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton. Look at this. Anthony Phantom of Utopia. People are searching for it. I don't know why it's not here yet. Dude, I've been watching YouTube so long that I remember when Anthony Fantano would actually have music in his reviews. He'd play music. Actually, I wasn't. I don't remember when he was doing that. I remember the re-uploads that people posted on YouTube because I think he privated them or deleted them. I feel like I should be the one making the YouTube iceberg. Okay, this one's a bit better. Um, I no iceberg is complete without PewDiePie though, and probably Mr. Beast as well. But this one actually has like YouTube uh, phenomena, you know? I don't know about this, unsearchable vids. Uh, Petscop is pretty damn popular. Hi Walter is pretty damn popular. Bro, why is Mr. Anime in the... Okay, they're trolling. They're trolling. Yeah, bro, look at the drawing here. Look at this. This is obviously a troll. I don't know why I didn't see this. I'm, I'm an idiot. They're like, okay, it makes sense for Mr. Anime to be on the tier list. I mean, on, on, on the iceberg chart, but not like on the very bottom. I feel like... I, I feel like... At this point, Mr. Anime is more well known than like fucking Casm G. I don't, I don't want to. There's too much time, too much work. But like, there's genuinely good things you could put on, on a, a YouTube iceberg. Like, bro, do you guys remember that one thing that like Mr. Beast was? It wasn't even Mr. Beast. It was like Mr. Beast's crew. Colin and Samir maybe had a call with those people. It was actually a group of big YouTubers, and this was like 2021 or something. This is way before ChatGPT. And they were basically working on some project that they didn't want to like talk, they didn't want to give too many details about. They were working on this like basically like, okay, give me a prompt, like, okay, give me 10. They, they type it in, give me 10 uh, viral video ideas for the next Mr. Beast video. And then they, you know, they had trained it on a data set and then it would pop out with like 10 solid video ideas. And some of them were actually pretty damn good. Keep in mind, Chad GPT like became public like very end of 2022 or something like that. And it popped off in like 2023 in like January, February. Dude, this was in 2021. And I remember they were, they were actually trying to keep it under wraps, like all the details about it. But things fall through the cracks. You know, people talk, the grapevine exists. And if you're really active in the community, you'll hear about this stuff, you know? And now everyone's freaking out about like uh, AI, uh, uh, AI voice and like Adobe and Microsoft and all this shit. And it's like, bro, you know, this shit's been a thing since like 2013, 2016. Like, look at this, look at this. This is some shit that you could put on like a YouTube iceberg right here. There's actually interesting like depths of YouTube that nobody talks about. Look at all this shit. It's six years ago, six years ago. Pixin Perfect made a video on it. I think that's where I m must have found it. With Jordan Peele. I didn't even realize Jordan Peele was a part of it. November 16th, 2016. 16,000 views. Lots of 16s here. Look what happens, right? Adobe Foco. Uh, I jumped out of the bed and, um, and uh, uh, I kissed my dogs and my wife in that order. <laughs> So how about we uh, mess with uh, who he actually kissed? It's actually easy. We can just type the word dogs here. Look at the shit, bro. Look at the shit. And? Look at everyone, like listen to everyone in the crowd. And uh, uh, I kissed my wife and my dogs. That one was bad, right? That one was not that great. It sounded like it just took one word to the next, right? 
But keep in mind, first of all, this is the only audio sample that is given. It's not trained on any data. Like how the AI today, like if you go on all the voice AIs today, it's trained on like hours and hours and hours, like weeks, years of training data from like Joe Rogan and all this shit. Watch. Uh, we can actually type something that's not here. So let's remove the word my here. Your secret's out, Jordan. And uh, we just uh, type the word Jordan. And here we go. And uh, uh, I kiss Jordan and my dogs. <laughs> Crazy. And the thing is, like, nobody talks about this shit. Everyone gets hype about AI because they're, like, NPCs. They don't actually keep up with AI, but they just hop on the trends. And now AI is trendy. But this was a thing. And I remember, I swear to God, dude, people are not going to believe me because the earliest you'll find any videos of Adobe Voco is 2016. Adobe had something like this in 2013. It was not called Voco, but there are videos, like, leaks coming through in 2013, like, showing this kind of technology. Think about that, bro. Ten years ago. 10 years ago, they had this kind of technology. And again, Adobe Voco is one of those, it's a, I tried to contact them. I tried to talk with people at Adobe and they kept on telling, like I tried to like get access to it, right? For content, to use it, to like study it and all that stuff. You can't, it's not made and pretty much never will be. So just from what I've heard from talking to people at Adobe, it is made. It is a fully like fleshed out robust application, although it does require a bit of tech savviness. It's, it's not gonna be released to the public because they don't want, they don't necessarily care so much about the benefit they'd get from subscriptions, like the m marginal benefit they'd get from subscriptions if they like allow it versus the huge detriment they'd get for making that many enemies for allowing this kind of software to come out of their, you know, side of the internet. However, they do, they, they the technology leaks into other parts of AI voice things. And it also like, you look at Adobe Podcast, bro, that's like scary how it, like impressive it's able to handle voices. Voco was supposed to be the Photoshop for audio, but Adobe Podcast kind of already is. It can't do this, not at this level, but I just think about like, okay, look at the technology that they give us. Then look at the technology they have behind the scenes that they don't want to share. Then the technology in 2013 that they release a little bit of, or maybe it gets leaked, and then they take it off the internet. Bro, imagine what they have under wraps that's never been seen by the public. Not even me. Imagine what they have. And you could easily use this premise, which I would believe it. You could easily use this premise to create like a little entry, or like a redirect entry on like a YouTube iceberg. Like, dude, look at how deep this goes. I think they demonstrate some more later on in the fucking seminar or whatever, but this is actually better than the voice generators today because it's only using this one sentence to, to analyze the voice. That's why I don't believe, I don't believe anything that I hear on the internet anymore. Back in the day, they tell us like, okay, don't believe things you hear on the internet. And now it's like, oh, we must have fact checkers so that way we can believe everything on the internet. When that audio clip of Andrew Tate, like, you know, saying that kind of like crazy shit to that girl came out or whatever, right? Oh, look at what Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate is, is such a creepy rapist, he's sexual assaults coming on her. I didn't believe it because I know I'm, I'm in the grapevine. I talk with people. I'm in email loops. I know what kind of technology exists out there. If they want Andrew Tate to sound like he's saying something and the video technology is not there yet. So we're not going to show the video, but they might actually, because I don't know. I mean, just from what I know, the video technology is not there yet, but it's close. It's really, really close. So it's like people, people are like, oh. How can you not believe this? Because I, I know the people who fake it. That's how I don't believe it. You know what's another thing you could add to the YouTube iceberg? This right here. Everyone always talks about FUPA and that whole, you know, H3H3 lawsuit thing, right? Where it was like a pivotal, like landmark case for YouTube. That's not where the pivotal landmark cases for YouTube started. First of all, it started with Viacom, the $1 billion lawsuit. But this was an even more important more pivotal lawsuit and it happened to someone who's actually not a fucking idiot like h3h3 a year into what we were doing i got sued you know it's like day of like leaks were like if you had an exclusive it was huge traffic right. so somebody who worked in a printing house their son was with them at work one day and saw these printing materials was unannounced phone took a bunch of pictures it was awesome because it was it was the specs it was this and sent it to us so we obviously published it and then the printing house sued us they decided to serve me at my house with a uniformed officer on a sunday i mean my wife answered the door it was really scary and then motorola got involved motorola was back in the printing house before you know motorola wow. sold so i'd make a decision like we just like give up the source. So I contacted a lawyer and decided to fight it. And then the more we went on, the more we realized that if we had lost a lawsuit, it would have been precedent 
for websites to, yeah. to reveal sources. Yeah, and that's more crazy. Like, that's crazy that like living month to month, you're taking on this huge responsibility. And no one talks about this. Everyone still talks about the H3H3 H3 lawsuit. No one talks about the Techno Buffalo, Buffalo lawsuit. I had employees, so I was paying them, but I didn't pay myself for five months. I was living on, living on credit cards. Our website was like, be sleuthy, stealthy ninjas and send us leaks. And so their attorneys were like, this is not a real website. It's not a real public. Like, hmm. They shouldn't be entitled to journalistic shield laws. And it boiled down to we essentially were like paying the tolls, but we couldn't drive on the roads. So the verdict came in and we lost. The judge ruled against us that we did not qualify as media. So that by default would have spread to other websites. So we essentially filed a, an appeal. It was a motion for reconsideration and... The judge reversed the decision. There you go. I still have, I have a framed, from, oh my I have a gosh. framed article in our office from the Chicago <laughs> Tribune was the talking about it. Sigh of relief. It was the most amazing sigh of relief. And then you know, I, I countersued the owner of the. It just got way out of hand. <laughs> him. And, Hell, he's going off. He's like, oh, I'm on a winning streak. I'm on a roll. The, but if you think about it, like that's like I don't blame him, bro. The entire landscape of like tech leaks, video game leaks, iPhone leaks, all the GTA Six stuff. Not only would all that be different, the concept of what constitutes media would be different, which is a really dangerous thing to play around with. Like to say, oh, I am a journalist. And for a judge to say, no, you're not a journalist. You don't get to qualify for these, you know, uh, free speech protections that journalists get. It's like a scary thing. And it's like, damn, what kind of a corrupt system would allow that? It's crazy that a judge allowed that. I think about it for a second. Tech YouTubers really have the best longevity out of any genre of YouTube. Like you think about like the Unbox Therapies and the MKBHDs and the, you know, Snazzy Labs and all these kinds of people. They really stand the test of time. The average lifespan for like, a, you know, a commentary channel is like three years or some shit, right? These guys have been working on this shit for like 15 years and they're still going strong. John Redinger, that's his channel now. It's, it's not Techno Buffalo anymore. Yeah, he's still he's still going at it, making tech videos. And like, that's another thing you could put on the iceberg, like how all these channels like came and went, you know? Like, remember that whole fucking Marina Joyce shit? Like just random, ra like you could just go through fucking drama alert and just get a whole bunch of ideas through that. Or all the fucking channel hacks that happen on YouTube, all the channel hacks, all the comment hacks, all the hacks that happened. Or you could add this guy to it. Cause like, I don't know, his videos all went private. I think they went private. I don't think he deleted them. And he made these like, if you don't buy the channel, he made these like dope, like sick animations. And I don't know, they might be somewhere else on the internet. But um, as far as I can tell, like when this video came out or I guess before the video even, they all went, just went offline. I think Fine Brothers was a great example of this, where they were like, they, if you go back to the old stuff, like they were doing sketches, they were doing like they were doing stuff with makers. There's all kinds of wild. Mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, like there's so much. There's hella like deep stuff you could dive deep into for like a YouTube iceberg. I don't know why they didn't put any of this stuff in there. This is what I'm saying. I was I was literally thinking about this yesterday because I reacted to that Veritasium video and I'm like, the YouTube executives would not understand what the hell Veritasium is talking about because they don't make content. Like if I ran YouTube, if I was a CEO of YouTube or if I was some executive at YouTube, I would do so much more for the platform and for the creators than these people that don't even have a channel. Because I understand the marketplace. I was there from the start. I saw all this shit. I was watching it closely. I was a part of it. Okay, so there's this channel right here, which is like, they make these like interesting little like, you know, sound effect type videos with their voice, right? And they got this whole thing going, which is like, these are good views, right? But then you go to his most popular videos and you're like, okay, something doesn't add up. There's no way a channel that's get, that's been getting like this many views, especially a lot of them happening in like the past few months has 20 million subscribers. And by the way, has had 20 million subscribers for a long time now. I don't know what's going on because I asked a couple people and they don't even know about this channel. Like in America, they don't know about it. And nobody in the comments really like mentions anything. Maybe like this is one of those channels where it was rebranded as something else or it was previously like the band or something like that. I don't know. But on first glance, this clearly seems like subbotting. Who knows? I'm not saying that it is, but it looks like it. And there are a lot of instances of like very high profile subbotting, like with uh, Deji or whatever that you could put on the YouTube iceberg. There's a lot, man. There's a lot of good shit you could put on there. This is a bad color for a, for a font. Happy Tree Friends is definitely not as well known as like Vsauce or, or like Game Theory or Smosh. But I would say it's about the same level as the angry video game nerd. That's pretty on point. 
and Kevin McLeod. Actually, no, if you're talking about Kevin McLeod as like a name, it's more well known. If you're talking about Kevin McLeod as in his music, it should be in uh, like the highest tier. This was a real fucking mess right here. It's a good, ad- like these are some good additions actually. This is a good tier list. I mean, Iceberg Chart. These should be one higher. Uh, this is n- by no means, Machinima should not have this picture next to it. YouTube Poop. Okay, maybe it makes sense to put it lower than it actually is because it is very popular. But it just makes sense to put it lower. But Machinima, and this should be lower too. New Super Mario Bros. Walkthrough Part 22. I don't know about this. Even though I played New Super Mario Bros. extensively. And I know the game inside and out. Mr. Anime, Elsa Gate. Elsa, actually that's that's reasonable to have it here. Salad Fingers and Petscop, they belong right next to each other. Oh yeah, Meat Spin. That's another one of those. Like in the last stream that I did, I mentioned like those things, you know, like Lemon Party and all that stuff. Meat Spin belongs with those. Batman has game sounds really familiar, but I don't know about it. I don't know what the hell they're trying to say by this. I don't know what that even means. Most disliked comments? I don't know how the hell anyone would even figure that out. And actually dislikes don't even affect comments. They haven't affected comments for a long time. YouTube is still a dating site. I mean, if you really want to be technical about dating, so you really want to go deep into what constitute like the the true motivations behind all these things. Sure, that's a good entry actually. And and the dating evolved. It's not what it used to be. It's not like a dating site in like a wholesome kind of way of what dating sites wanted to be or what dating sites what people imagine dating sites could do well and and supplement in society and and you know, do some good for the world. It's not like that. As society itself evolves and as degeneracy evolves, so too will the technology of dating. And so you can say it is a dating site, not in the way that people wanted it to be, but it's like, bro, look how much fucking grooming goes on on YouTube. And you're like, oh, that's not dating. Okay, well then people don't even date today. A lot of the like actual game and like dating today is like, is people just manipulating each other. And like now people are starting to notice it because People who are authentic and on the fringes are calling it out, like with that new movie, Sound of Freedom or whatever. But it, it back in the day, in like 2016 and shit, there was so much grooming and nobody cared. Ali Bamani called it an investment, but he's like just another dude, right? But um, a lot of YouTubers I talked to actually back then, like 2016, small time YouTubers. I didn't have that many subscribers. I only had, I peaked at 17,000. So the YouTube, uh, like the YouTubers that I would talk to would like, always have less than 100,000 or so, or around 100,000. And these guys would call it pre-orders. They'd say they pre-order girls. Illegal actions were everywhere, being done all the time, and no one said a thing. YouTube watches you. Um, that seems like a stupid entry at first, but like, that, this is a good, this is a good iceberg. Because YouTube really does, the algorithm really is watching you more than you're watching it. If you're easily offended, then leave the video now and go watch some other sh- I should have a disclaimer like this at the beginning of my videos. Lilliput! <laughs> if she didn't snake that other girl, then I'd say you smash. But oh, oh, yeah. wait, no, wait, that's crazy. This video came out way before any of that uh, Amanda Cerny stuff came through. I, I don't know what, it, like, who was the one that reported on it. If it was like Shane Dawson or it might have been Nerd City or someone like that. But before like the drama actually popped off, this video was made like long before that. So they were all in the know about this stuff. Nobody said anything though. Wait, wait, the other, what? wait, what? Is this gossip? What a bitch. Still smash though. Of course. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 KSI made really good videos back in the day, man. Like, he had a good sense of humor. Like, he was just grinding, making funny videos, like, making good content. He doesn't do this kind of shit anymore. <laughs> Leah yeah. Marie Johnson. Wait, how old is she? She's over 18. That's good news. Whoa, wait. I want to see what they say about it. I want to see what they say. Very good news. Three, two, one, smash. Oh. No, he's only saying that. I don't think KSI remembers. Leah Marie Johnson. This girl. If you go back to the Fine Bros episode, kids react to KSI. Kids react to KSI LGBT nine years ago. Look who it is. So she was 16. She's three years older than me, which means now she's 26. Bro, this guy reminds me of uh, Sam from Sam and Nico. Yeah! KSI is the name of his old Halo clan when he played the video game. Oh my. Dude, she was so different back then. She was like, so- she was a normal person. God, he's a complete nerd. All the guys that want to watch the gaming. I thought the YouTube fan bases were kind of dominated by the women. Like, because we fangirl. She actually thought that? 
YouTube is 80% men. That's interesting. How like people in their own little pockets of the internet can think that that's indicative of the whole thing. Well, KSI's fans are called the KSI Army. Yup. Wow, that's been so long since I've heard about the KSI Army. It's been forever. And there was like the Sky Army and all that. Like people would have names for their fan bases. I miss that. I miss that whole thing. Join the army. No. No. I don't think I'll be joining the KSI Army. I was in the KSI soon. Army. They sound pretty intense. <laughs> sure. I'm joining the army. Sorry, Mom and Dad. Girl, he's a nerd. Seven years later, look at him now, the king of YouTube. Dude, this is two years ago. This was after he made this video. And she's in it. That's so interesting how he doesn't remember that. Yeah. Marie Johnson. And he's obviously smashing, obviously. Because he was also basically a teenager at the time that he got reacted to. I actually met Leah Marie Johnson. I didn't like meet her in person, but we spoke on Google Hangouts. I, I never met any YouTubers. I've never gone to any events or anything like that. But we talked on Google Hangouts for a little bit, for like five, ten minutes. Um, but I'll, that's a story I'll tell for a different day. I miss all those old KSI like deleted videos, all this stuff where he'd like go to like sexually harass people at like conventions, and in public, like saying racist jokes, and like all the like the strip FIFA, the Q and A's. Man, he has he has hella like half of his whole catalog is gone now. There was those videos with the uh, that that girl. What was her name? Like the first like girlfriend that he had that like popped off. Shauna, I think was her name. And I think there was also Gujon Daniel videos that were a thing, which I never ended up actually watching, but I saw like re-uploads here and there. I think they're all gone now. And then there was the videos where he went to that convention and motorboated that girl and then got her on the Q&A and did all that stuff. Man, he, he knew how to capitalize off this kind of stuff. And like now everyone does this stuff, like now it's become the meta to make content with these kinds of girls, like what Aiden Ross did with like Sky Bree and like what KSI did with that random like rebound girl and all that stuff. Or not KSI, XQC, my bad. What XQC would do with that girl. Like it's it's just all over the place now. What people do with these girls. Or like the, you know, like Tinder in real life. And, you know, what Logan Paul and, and like Logan Paul's friend does with all these like porn stars and all that stuff. And what David Dobrik does with all of them. It's like really, KSI was the first one to be doing all this shit. Like Logan Paul and Jake Paul's career and like all those guys' careers would be nothing without KSI evolving the meta. Hold up. There's actually a KSI has cancer. This is the funniest. Cause dude, first time I watched this video, first time I watched the video, I thought it was real. It's such a troll. It's such a good troll too, man. This, this troll holds up. Guys are not going to believe this. KSI has cancer. Do you want to- He took, like he didn't cite any sources or nothing, bro. This is the origin of misinformation. This video, this singular video here started all of the misinformation stuff that happens today with the election and all the stuff, bro. They took the Photoshop picture of KSI's like bald head, which this was, this was a normal picture. He didn't actually look like this in this picture. Leave this. KSI has cancer. Do you want to win all the gift cards down below? Just leave a- This is not an ad, bro. Like, it's not like an ad, like, cut break in the video. He had this in the video. He's like, KSI has cancer. Oh, you guys want to win a giveaway? You guys want to join my giveaway? Win a few gift cards? So like and subscribe and comment. And rate the video five stars. You can hit 10,000 <laughs> likes. It's an explosion. He blacked out his Twitter and his yeah, YouTube. I remember this. He stopped posting videos, deleted two and a half billion views worth of videos, yeah. and decided to take a break. He made the whole last video and, like, the rest of the it was kind of like serious but with like fun music in the background i don't know i thought it was legit the first time i saw it oh wait rage laid in america he still has it up on his channel people were making edits of this and like just making it like the whole screen red and all this shit it was hilarious people were putting it in like their youtube rewinds like their fan versions of the youtube rewinds this isn't all of them bro this is legendary and i don't want to go through but like basically what happened is he made a movie called laid in america you see that and with this dude, which he also did one of his uh, Q and A's with. This was a funny one. Casper Lee, that's who it was. It was Casper Lee. And nobody ever watched this movie, but a hell of people torrented it and they pirated it. And it became like one of the most pirated movies of all time. And it like broke records and shit. And he's, he made this video like raging. And obviously like he knows what he's doing and he's doing this like for fun basically, right? I enjoyed the movie and that the movie was good. And that makes me happy. What doesn't make me happy is when I see shit like this. Like why the fuck are you <laughs> about to watch a movie illegally? Tweet me this, huh? 
Fucking send me your address, you cunt! Tell me where you live so I can find you and piss on you. And then I'm gonna slap you, steal money off you, use that money to buy the fucking DVD, and then I'm gonna beat the fucking DVD on your fucking head. And then I'm gonna sign it. Cause I'm a nice guy. <laughs> real, why are these bitches tweeting? <laughs> I just pirated it. Sorry, dude. This movie's cool, by the way. Me, that they're gonna illegally download it and then enjoy the movie. I really want to do a sequel because I've got some really fucking sick ideas. But I can't do it if everyone's just illegally downloading the movie. He much knows what he was doing. He, KSI, at no point, especially at this point in his career, maybe in the first couple years, but there's no point after he hit like a million subs that he ever needed money from anyone or anything and you know, everything he did after that was all for the purpose of the fact that he wanted to do it. it was all passion stuff like the amount of money he made from going into the ring and boxing and you know giving up like a year and a half of his life and putting himself in danger he could have made that same amount of money from like two weeks of doing youtube videos so it's like i know he's like trying to this is a sense of humor he doesn't actually care about people taunting the movie in fact he knows, he's smart enough to know that, like, him making this video is going to lead to more people torrenting it. I think that's kind of what he was going for, actually. I think he wanted to help people to torrent the movie just to watch it. That's it. Just, just buy the movie. Don't, don't illegally download it. Don't pirate it, man. Please. <laughs> Damn. Really? KSI, KSI had a fun, like, had a fun life. KSI really lived a good fucking life if you really think about it. He really did it all. What the? This looks like the fucking chocolate rain guy. Oh, this, <laughs> this is Bobby Lee. What's going on, bro? This whole, like, this whole era of KSI was just him doing a bunch of side quests. And, like, everyone knows all, like, the side quests that, like, Snoop Dogg did and all that shit. But, like, nobody actually thinks about what KSI was doing. He really did it all. We've got a fucking book. I've already told you this exists. Oh, so we yeah. Oh, yeah, Mr. Krabs. There was that fucking book, and nobody bought that book. I don't know. This is probably not something you could add to the conspiracy, but this is something I noticed. This channel has to be taking checks from Herman Miller under the table because they're not, like, sponsored by them, but every single one of their videos, it's always Herman Miller S tier, Herman Miller S tier, every fucking time. I know, I know, I mean, okay, uh, you know, th this is all just a joke, you know, for the sake of I don't want to get sued, but, dude, Herman Miller has to be paying them behind the scenes or some shit. Hey, yo, the Duck song, we just watched this yesterday. Mm, I don't like that these two are next to each other. I mean, if you're talking about YouTube as a whole, sure. Damn, 13. Uploaded in 2016. What the fuck, man? Why don't I upload all the nursery rhymes that I know when I was little? That would be a great idea. I'm actually do that. Wait, the whole YouTube channel is named Pink Frog Baby Shark. The song is so big, they named their channel after it. Yo, get this guy off the thumbnail. This looks... Freaky, bro. This guy looks like a shark. He looks like fucking Voldemort, dude. You forgot the space right there. Mr. B Squid Game is a lot bigger than Mumbo Jumbo. And dude, if, if, you know, like white moms know about something, it belongs up here. YouTube kids, everyone knows about YouTube kids. It's crazy to say because there will be a point where it's like, you can tell all the old things. They all belong in like the S tier for like that time or like the highest uh, level for that time. But it's like all these old evolution of dance and all that stuff. Most people have not seen these videos. I, I don't know why gold play button is here and diamond play button is here. All the play buttons are all equal, just as well known as each other. Except for this one, red diamond play button. That makes sense why it's down here. It should be up here, actually. And so should this. T-Series versus PewDiePie, that belongs over here. Dude, this feels like it's the same tier, dude. BuzzFeed is way more well-known than Susan Wojcicki or whatever. Ooh, I haven't seen this in a minute. Social Blade? I don't know how popular it is because I'm in the bubble of the internet where everyone knows about Social Blade. So I don't really know how popular it is outside of that. Social Blade is definitely more popular than Technoblade. Wait, what's more popular? Well, why or Technoblade? Oh, I did not know about this. I don't think this is... I mean, I can imagine what happened, but like, I don't really care. It's actually, I'm the bald guy, not I'm the bold guy. Unless there's some, you know, I'm the bold guy joke that I don't know about. MatPat is pretty damn popular. He deserves to be a little higher, actually. Darman, I know that he's a lot more popular outside my my own little circle. I know he belongs in the higher tier, uh, not because people like us who are going to see the, like, who are the kind of people who see these iceberg charts, but because, like, just generally for YouTube. Oh, Okay, good on you for including this, um, and this, and uh, this should be higher. Popular MMOs. I don't, I, I never like watched him, watched him, but a few of my friends watched him. Boxy was less of a YouTube event and more of just a general internet event at the time. Um, dude, 
This was huge. Like, people on the news talked about it. You would go and ask random people, oh, you know Logan Paul? Like, what? Logan Paul? Like, the guy who filmed the dead body? Oh, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows about this. Look at the disparity. How many people you think know about the Suicide Force versus FPS Russia? To be fair, a lot of people probably do know about FPS Russia, but they probably don't remember him. Sure. And this is everywhere, too. This is not like a, a obscure kind of video. I don't know about these pictures. I don't know how to feel about these. I feel like you should use like YouTube related pictures for, you know, the side things. The culture one is interesting. Let me click on the culture one. You know what's something that I feel like should be included on here is... Like AMVs, you know, that belongs in the culture section. In the same way that I talked about in my previous stream, that like the internet itself was built off of the back of porn distribution technology. People don't realize just how deep the connection is between early YouTube growth and shonen anime. Like it's, it wasn't uncommon back then to find like whole last like seasons of anime in like 2006, right? And, and a lot of them are actually still up on the website, only like episodes here and there, you know? The old, like the popular stuff is taken down, like One Piece is gone, Dragon Ball is gone, but like, you know, occasionally you'll still find like a 16 year old video that's like, here's a funny clip from One Piece in like the Windows Movie Maker style transition and like that text. And then it shows like the, the uh, what's it called? Like the blue screen at the end with like, thanks for watching, you know? But with like the lens flare transition. Actually, no, no, it wouldn't even say thanks for watching. Occasionally it would say that, but like usually from for back then it would be like lol XD or something like that. And naturally, of course, you also got to have YouTube poop in here as like a part of the culture. Ooh, this one is good. This one is good. Okay, you split up Ian Hecox and Anthony Padilla. You didn't need to do that, but this is all Mind Turtle from the same series. Like this is um, YouTube characters. So it's like part of the whole lore, the general lore of YouTube, right? Fred Figglehorn. I don't think Kizuna AI, Kizuna AI or AI is actually all that popular. Like I know she's popular worldwide. She it is popular worldwide, right? But like in in the mainstream side of YouTube, like I get there's a lot of viewers and the numbers are up for sure. I don't think all of many people like in the mainstream know about her though. Everybody do the flop. I didn't know his name was do the flop guy, but um, again, Gargura, it's like he's not I. I don't think, I think he's more popular than he's not I in the mainstream. I think she's more well known, but uh, at least in the United States. But actually outside the United States, she might be less popular. I, I really don't know. I, w I wouldn't know, honestly. Scott the Waz. I don't know why Caillou is here, I guess. Uh, Ruby Rose from Ruby, from the anime RWBY. Okay, yeah, yeah, I was like confused. I was like, Ruby Rose? There's three Ruby Roses at this point. Actually, there's four. Is, it, is the duck from the duck song? Don't hug me, I'm scared. I forgot about that. Oh my God. I feel like no one talks about this video. I feel like no one ever said a word about this video after it got uploaded. Oh, they should put Ian's mom up here too. This guy's good that he's catching all of this. But like these are YouTube characters. You're damn right exactly about what you got going on here. Interesting that you're able to remember all this stuff. Young Cash Register, aka Little Broomstick, belongs right up here with Baku. A lot of people, if they know him as the boneless pizza guy, then you put him up here. If they know him as Baku, then they belong on the same level. I've never heard of any of these, honestly. I think Vanos counts as a YouTube character, doesn't he? Like with the whole owl and all that stuff. I would make the claim that I'd say there's a point in time where when Vanos had like in between two to four million subscribers where legit for like a solid few months, he was the most entertaining YouTuber in the world during that time. Like I showed his video to my little cousins. I showed him to my older cousins. I showed him to my classmates at school. I showed him to my mom, like hella people. And there wasn't a single person, no matter what age group or demographic or whatever, that didn't love his videos. Everyone, even my mom, she was like glued to the screen. His GTA videos. It wasn't just, it was like all, you know, like the paintball things they did in like Black Ops 2. There was a, a certain kind of magic that ha just happened with the late Black Ops 2 and early GTA 5 videos that were that the whole Vanos crew was doing. And actually, it, it, it also spilled over into other like early prop hunt and that kind of stuff. But just for like the first like three to five prop hunt videos or so. That was a surreal time actually. Because that was like... That was a time where if you were to ask me like, okay, what direction is YouTube going in? I would say it's going up. Content's getting better. Quality's getting better. Videos, channels, the channels that are doing better, that deserve to do well, are doing well. I was like optimistic. 
And I took that for granted. He didn't fall off. But it's like when you're that high up, it's like as they said in the video, it's like the gaming gods just like love Evan for some reason. Even with that whole, um, th especially that glitch, that's such an iconic glitch that he did in um, Call of Duty Prop Hunt. The like finale video of it, that was just an amazing finale, dude. An amazing finale. There's shit like that where it's like, man, this dude in the editing room is a goddamn storyteller. It doesn't really matter how great you are like you could have nines you know like nine out of ten quality videos coming out daily i'm not talking about like nine out of ten of your videos are quality i'm talking about each video is like a nine out of ten but to reach the same level of glory that those like 11 out of 10 videos were it's 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 so it's so out of the league of like modern youtube and even me i don't even feel like talking about it bro we used to watch annoying orange Why? Why did we watch Annoying Orange? What was the- why did we try to annoy ourselves? Why did we do that? Wait, uh, Nice Peter and Epic Lloyd should also be here. If you want to include everyone from ERB, that would take up like a huge part of the list and also they're not like YouTube characters, they're just characters that end up on YouTube. But Nice Peter and Epic Lloyd are YouTube characters. And so is Sky. Sky Army, like I mentioned earlier, and Butter, and the Squids, the Squid Army. That's Post Malone, by the way, back there. Sky does Minecraft and Post Malone. What a crazy collab picture. Jerome ASF. Jerome versus Game... Oh, I mean, that was his YouTube channel. I mean, not his YouTube channel. That was his uh, Minecraft username, Jerome ASF. I literally mentioned Kevin McLeod earlier. If you never... If you don't know who Kevin McLeod is, he made a ton of iconic music like this, this Sneaky Snitch by Kevin McLeod. This is, this is not iconic. It's not, but it's such a shame that it's not. It really could have been. Post Malone playing guitar on Team Crafted Live. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. I gotta watch Evangelion again. This is heat, bro. Bro even uses intro in his breakup. I miss these kinds of intros. We decided to break up. <laughs> hey, dude, this is hard as fuck. Hey, what the hell? They put the wallpaper over the thing? Yeah, but yeah, for real. I'm about to make this... I'm about to use this as like a cover-up for a song or something like that, dude. Sky, please don't copy strike me. I love your videos. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm part of Sky Army. You know what I just thought about? What's an interesting little... Uh, YouTube like culture thing which nobody really thinks about topic channels YouTube says they don't allow bots like automated systems to upload even though they they do allow it they have their own automated systems that upload YouTube videos it's very like obviously like shown blatantly shown that topic channels are run by bots and YouTube doesn't just allow it YouTube facilitates it even though it's against their own terms of service YouTube helps people break their own terms of service. Will and he, I guess if you're a part of the YouTube community, then everyone knows about him. But outside of that, maybe they do, maybe they do. He gets good views, at least he did. Inside of Mind and Meat Canyon are not to be up here with like Markiplier and Azzyland and I don't know what the hell this is. I don't know why, I don't know why that's here. Uh, Seth Everman, is well known for like one or two things. He's not like a well-known popular YouTuber like that. Maybe he is, I actually don't know. I haven't seen his videos in a long time. And Jeffree Star is not really like a YouTuber. Jeffree Star is kind of a celebrity. Okay, Keemstar is definitely more popular than Will and E. Trisha Paytas is, I think, I think that's tough. Leafy is here, definitely is. Bell Delphine definitely is. ZHC? What is this channel again? I don't This sounds really, really familiar. Oh, yeah, it's the guys that would, like, paint on this stuff. I forgot, yeah. Look, they're, like, painted. They have this same thumbnail where they have the same, like, paint Photoshop thing that they put on every single one of their thumbnails. Bro, it's the same Photoshop thing. They just, like, warp it around a little bit. TLC? As in, like... The girl group, or the learning channel, or... Ooh, Sir Palo. I'm subscribed. I see them in my sub box, but I don't even know what the hell they do. I completely forgot. Right, they make animations. I remember. A Gadmator? Okay, fine. You could put him here. Nobody really talks about him, you know? Rosanna Pensiano. Oh, you forgot the A. It's not Pensino. I can understand how you make that mistake. A lot of people made the mistake. It's Pensiano. Huh, no one talks about her either. She was in that Smash Pass I just watched, by the way. Babish Culinary... 
Bro, you're not giving these culinary video like these culinary channels enough. Actually, she's not a culinary channel. She's only baking. She doesn't cook like chicken or whatever. She doesn't do savory food. She does only sweet. She does nerdy nummies. Ziz, this is good. This is a good entry. Sam Pepper is also kind of a good entry. Ice Poseidon should be on here too. Um, but that then you should include like all of YouTube and Twitch as well. Boogie two hundred eighty eight should be a bit higher. Crazy Russian Hacker should also be significantly higher. This makes no sense. You're trolling. I hate when icebergs do this. They try to put some like extra profound thing in the bottom tier. Like, bro, just put something reasonable down there. Something I could research, you know? This is a decent little too mad. Wow, a lot of shit's going on with too mad right now. And maybe, I guess iDubs too, because Creator Clash 2 just happened. Wow, iDubs became a lol cow. You would be lying. You'd be disingenuous to say that he's not earning a lot of his views, a substantial number of his views, just for people, just because people want to see the downfall, just because they want to see what's happening and they want to, it's like watching a car crash, you know? We had a good thing, you stupid son of a bitch. It was perfect, but no, you <laughs> just had to blow it up, you and your pride and your ego. That's true, man. We had a good thing going, Idubs. We had a good thing going. You were our last hope. You became the very thing you swore to destroy. You, you see, Filthy Frank died a hero, right? Idubs lived long enough to see himself become the villain in more ways than one. Hey, you guys seen this video? Oh, hey, who disliked it? Why would you dislike this video? There's not really any, like, old channels. I mean, like, how to basic, right? But this channel stood the test of time. Shane Dawson, once again. And they, they, if they uploaded today, they would still get hella views. I mean, I guess Fred. Where's Ray William Johnson? I haven't seen Ray William Johnson in any of these icebergs. Bro, remember when Ray William Johnson, he would have this thing. He'd be like, oh, make sure to find the frame of, like, the special secret frame or whatever, right? Because what he would do is, back in the day, YouTube thumbnails were that they had like a very specific um predictable algorithm they would go based off of so instead of letting you select your out because they wouldn't let you select your thumbnail it would just randomly pick it from the video so they would make a custom thumbnail and they would change one frame of the video like halfway through or whatever like a third of the way through to that frame because they knew exactly when it was going to be when youtube would take the thumbnail that's such a jank way of doing it but it worked so well and like only the bigger youtubers like smosh and them could do that kind of thing. And it's so funny because you can go back and actually find those frames of like, and they all recreated the thumbnails, but you could still find the custom thumbnails in frames of their videos. Wait, dude, look, this has gotta be on the YouTube iceberg. This was huge back in the day. Like, man, I, I don't say this often. Trust me, I don't say this often, but these girls are actually funny. That's the beauty of old YouTube, man. It had authenticity. When girls are authentic, they can be funny. It just girls nowadays are not authentic. And guys, they are, nobody's authentic nowadays. It's the basilisk. BJ Novak. Uh, again, like the office clips are like popping off on YouTube. Matt Damon, he was just in, um, what's it called? Oppenheimer, popping off on YouTube. But like these old videos, because YouTube hates promoting old videos. Like, these videos are not growing at all. Uh, Timothy Delgado is also an OG. Oh my god. Hi, I'm Ron. So there's this girl, Bobby Altoff, right? And you look at her, like, sense of humor, right? She's basically parodying, like, a 17-year-old a bratty teen girl. And I would know because I have cousins who are 17-year-old bratty teen girls. Are you going to buy year, me a right? flight home? Are you going to buy me a flight home? So it's like, the, you see the way that she handles things and the way that she's like she has this like condescending nature to her but it's it's a real interesting character actually when you parody it right dude these girls did it better 11 years earlier and they didn't need to do it in like podcast form because everyone wants to start a fucking podcast everyone thinks oh you have to start a podcast you have to start a podcast people are starting podcasts as like coping mechanisms instead of going to therapy nowadays it's like no you don't have to make everything a podcast you can actually cut it up and leave only the interesting parts look at their senses of humor and look at like what they leave in the video and how like they try to make it intentionally awkward the whole you know the penis thing you know I can totally see why a woman wouldn't want to commit to you. This is definitely not a good interview. That's literally, bro, I swear to God, 
Bobby Altoff is just watching these old videos and going like, hmm, they haven't done this in a while. And these are good videos because they're from old YouTube and from actual artists and people who are genuinely passionate about that era, which means they're basically all good videos. And people nowadays are so fucking stupid that they won't even realize where this stuff comes from. I swear to God, Bobby Altoff or her, her manager or her creative director or whoever's on her team that's managing like her character who's telling her you gotta act like this and be like this they're watching these videos they're watching live prude girls (laughs) 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 she's way funnier than her i mean like funny wise it's hard to say but she's just better than her they're both equally as funny but the character the characters that they're playing meshes really well with brunettes And I know that is not going to age well. What I just said is not going to age well. And it already hasn't aged well. But it was a different time back then in the internet. It was just a different era. It was to understand what it was like, you know, a a 6 out of 10 all the way up to like a 9 out of 10. Blondes outclassed brunettes. However, a 10 out of 10 brunette was like twice as good, twice as superior as a 10 out of 10 blonde. That's just how it was. That's how... That that was the law of nature. Brunettes invested all of their evolution points into their tens out, 10 out of 10s. And like blondes have this beauty and art that can be expressed uh, across all the other levels. However, brunettes don't really have that option. And so if you're an 8 out of 10 brunette, you're going to look like a 6 out of 10. You're going to look like a 9 out of 10. You're going to look like all these other girls. You're not going to look like anything special. And that was only for a little bit. The meta was also always changing and it... It was mostly driven by like characters, like how we saw the, tier, the uh, iceberg chart, characters of YouTube, right? That's really what did it. It was it was the characters, and nowadays there's not really characters like that, you know. Now it's all companies and and influencers and corporations. How did you get into none of your fucking business? That's all. I was just wondering. It's because she's a beautiful, independent woman. I do what and I want. She makes her own choices. Yeah, and she's not gonna let a man or the <laughs> man. Tell her how she's going to live her Mm-mm. life. Mm-mm. No. It's it's so funny how, like, these girls parody what girls ended up becoming. Never. No. Go, nope. Not. Uh, not going to happen. Not Never. today, not ever. Never going to happen. She's an independent special one. Whatever. You might be a little too harsh. Firm hand. Heavy you li- heart. You like that? When she hits me? I mean, look, I don't hit her. (laughs) See, these girls are actually funny. I'm about to show y'all something crazy. Because if you go to Hi, I'm Ron's channel, right? The guy that's being interviewed. Okay, Hi, I'm Ron topic. But then if you go to his channel, where's his channel? Ron Slaps Molina. I didn't see that. This stands for Let's Talk About Something More Interesting. Um, Or More Interesting. That's how they say it. Look, all these, like, videos are all uploaded by, like, dude bro. And, like, completely different people. This is OG, and he was part of MCN, which is how he actually got his, like, whole thing. Okay, yeah, this is it right here. It says deleted. I think that he just renamed his, his, like, public name to that. This is not a deleted profile picture. All of his videos are private, right? But do not fear, for the videos are right here. You look it up, Legend of Zelda rap, explicit version, Zelda gets played. That's what he would do. He would make a gets played videos. These are deleted videos, by the way. These videos are no longer on YouTube, but I have them. The production value and like the way that he would tell the whole story. And this beat was fire too. Hold up. Did that say Epona? I didn't notice that when I watched the video when I was a kid. You put Epona on a motorcycle, spray painted. That's so hard, bro. That's so hard. Ladies always tripping on me. They be requesting that I be questing. I be the best thing. Big stick. I swing. Okay, VFX at the time wasn't... It isn't, it isn't what it is today, you know? But it's like, man, this is worse than the annoying orange. Oh yeah, and this whole, like, navvy part. This one... If this was still up on YouTube, this would be the most replayed part of the video for sure. I'm calling it. They kind of messed up the beat for this part, honestly. I get that they wanted to do like a different thing for each character, 
But this, I don't know, I didn't like this part of the beat. Actually, yeah, nah, this would be the part with Sheik. This is this does not look like Sheik, but this would be the most replayed part of the video for sure. People were not making raps like ever, all the like YouTube raps were all like based off of like rap characters. Like this was obviously some like Twista, Busta Rhymes type like inspiration, right? That's what was going on here with Gannon. He's like dust in the breeze, I will have a little kid needs school if you come and let me fool with a beast, but roll plus I'm about to switch out beast mode. On me. Minecraft, this one sucked. This was, was this is cringe to watch. It's extremely cringe, but it's it's fire, dude. This one was the best one. I know Lisa Nova. I know Shay Carl. Shay Carl is pretty popular. Dodger is extremely popular still to this day. She stayed relevant this whole time. I don't know who that is. And I'm familiar with the yellow subscribe button, obviously. If you see videos that have this in it, you know it comes from an era where the people that were really doing it were people that were genuinely passionate about YouTube. Unless it was Ray William Johnson, because he wanted to get famous and he didn't have any other means of getting famous. And then now he doesn't know what the hell he wants and he's a confused, sorry, sad little man. They wanted to make this like crazy hard, you know? But like they didn't know how to, you know, get all this like VFX done like IRL. So they just used GT4 footage. Never bring a hammer to a gunfight. This is so weird, bro. This is real Mario Brothers shit right here. Yeah. Somebody call the motherfucking plumber. Yeah, I'm the man they call Mario. Got some holes in the back and it's time to I only remember watching the cleaned version. I didn't know I downloaded the explicit version. Mario using guns. And then that whole racist Mario thing where he used guns. And Peach had a black eye. Bro, this is like the worst green screen job I've ever seen. But it's nice how they put... This is DK... Oh, this is from Double Dash. Now, what you really got to pay attention to is the instrumental, okay? Because... Where this song like really shines is the beat. Forget everything else, just listen to the beat. It's so, man, they don't make beats like this anymore. Where you have like very, very honed in, very focused, very experienced producers really focusing on melody. Engine steam ahead, full confidence in the melody, like, and they just run with it, you know? This is definitely inspired by like older rap with the with this VST that they're using right here. This like Bro, there was no reason to do all like make all these scenes, bro. They were just having fun. Okay, hold on, hold on. I gotta prepare for this. Cause this is the hardest part of the whole song. Actually, this is the hardest like verse of all like YouTube parody rap history. It's Toad, like, cause you know, Toad is a mushroom. He's tweaking off the shrooms, rapping like, like a I love McConan type beat, you know? So like they have beat switch ups for like every character and they modify it like how Mims, you know, modifies the beat for like this, for when he shouts at different places, right? And, and usually it doesn't work out, but this time it's like so, it's so perfect. It's so fucking hard. And I get that like a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, whisper rap, like low key, like he's not going hard and screaming or whatever. And like that's what people liked back in the day because like YouTube meta at the time was just be as loud as possible. But like the confidence in this shit is next fucking level, bro. Because like he only has one scene and it's just him just walking through this little alleyway. And then Luigi comes out of here and then he has this whole like skit and all this stuff. And then he does all these things. But like Toad was literally, he, he clocked in. He's like, all right, I'm here for the video. They shot for 10 seconds and then he's like, all right, I'm out. I got shit to do. Mario! I got a magic mushroom in my mind And I'm feeling like I'm flying But I'm a toad so I am fine Yes, I'm fine Just cause I'm living a life for crime And I get mine Yes, I'm mine Yes I go by Luigi All the girlies wanna please me Cause I make it Better fucking pay me You, you be pushing up daisies I'm amazing Cause I'm up in the game so long And still nobody plays me Dude I didn't even realize How good that bar was when I was little He said, he said Cause I'm up in the game so long but still nobody plays me. Cause how he's been in the games this whole time, but nobody play, everyone just plays Mario. But he's like, nobody plays me. Even though I've been in the game this whole time. Listen, listen to the bar, listen to the bar. Hey, you, you be pushing up daisies. I'm amazing. Cause I'm up in the game so long and still nobody plays me. me. I'm racing. I don't really know who's having some game over. Somebody call the plumber. Cause when you fuck with me, and then you fucking with my brother. My brother. 
you got to create analogies. You got to be like, this is to this as this is to this. And so if you're comparing like Mario to Nico Bellic or something like that, like this is reasonable for like a Donkey Kong. Like this is a reasonable looking person. But then Candy Kong is just some chick with a gun. That's all they did. It's so on that like they didn't even try. Bro, this is the worst like green screen or black screen explosion stock footage composite I've ever seen in my life. Shout out to all y'all in the Mushroom Kingdom. Hey, they should have had Ron play Mario in the Mario movie instead of fucking Chris Pratt, dude. He would have been way better. This song doesn't work unless you listen to it back in the day. Like the context of being in that that whole like you have to actually be in that era. That's that's interesting now that I think about it. I wonder how different music would have sounded literally just living in different area eras because and areas because like the context of of who you're around and and what the like your your physiognomy to and all these things it really does influence how music sounds to you i don't understand how this would sound to other people i think you have to be like a kid in the era of like independent creators in the golden age of youtube in the golden age of youtube you have to be a kid and listen to the song to really listen to it at its peak and and develop a nostalgic connection otherwise i think someone hearing this today for the first time like as an adult would just they'd be like this song sounds so fucking amateur it sounds annoying it sounds like cringe but this is so fucking Fucking nostalgic to me, dude. I'll I'll stand by the song, dude. This song is so hard. Uh. Hi. That was cool. Why, hello there, Ash. That's Team Rocket, bro. This is Team Rocket right here. That's Meowth. Listen to the listen, bro. They have to have guns in every single one of their videos, bro. Listen to the melody, right? <laughs> Drive, Jesse. Damn, this is filmmaking, bro. This is cinema. Oh. I'm about to spit. I know all the lyrics, bro. Yup, yup. Yeah, I'm mashing, I'm blasting, making that cash and touch my hat, baby. That's my fashion. Check my badges, ball like it's magic. Better trade them out, cause y'all looking tragic. God come protect my crew is electric. All my moves, they be super effective. Better respect them, my deck right quick. Drag your ass in the trash, so quick, right quick. Yes, I'm the call of my life. Choose you. I know it sounds really bad. I gotta be quiet right now. People are sleeping. Like you look at the whole set and where they are, what they're doing, and like they got like this random chick to do this, and that's Dodger, I think. It's like, man, these people were just having fun. And like, this is why I wanted to do YouTube. This is why, like I watch videos like this and I'm like, I want this. Like these people live a complete life. Like they live life, they go and they explore and they act and they perform and they see what they're capable of and they see what others are capable of. And, and they get to meet all kinds of interesting people who play all kinds of interesting roles and have all kinds of interesting skills and they, they do interesting things and meet interesting people and see interesting places and they have an excuse to like live life and see the world. These are the kinds of videos that inspired me to do YouTube. This is what inspired my whole dream of doing it. Not like fucking phase rug showing off his millions of dollars like how pathetic does that sound right now like i talked about it earlier and you might think like oh there's not much of a difference between you know the people that inspired me to youtube and like the phase rugs but like look at the passion put into this stuff it's like they don't need to do any of this they're already making money this stuff costs money to do in fact like his whole channel is like being held hostage by some fucking mcn i think like this stuff literally lost money but you look at like the fun they're having and you look at the lives they live and you're like they're fucking living bro it's like you only get one chance at life man you only get one opportunity to play why not go all in why would you ever fold why would you ever keep play close to the chest you know why not experience what the world has to offer to you and maybe just maybe documented on camera this stuff is inspiring me honestly like going back and watching this stuff and listening to this stuff it's really inspiring me to like pursue youtube again it just nobody makes videos like this anymore i want to find passionate creators i just want to i would want nothing more in life than to surround myself with passionate youtubers that's all i care about i hope you can realize what i'm saying here because like listen to the melody right and even if you don't like if you don't resonate with the melody all that much try to imagine just Put, just ask yourself for one second, ask yourself, if you heard this melody when you were a kid, like three or four times, right? And then you heard it again when you were an adult, would you not have a nostalgic connection to it? Actually, 
I think Brock is up there with Toad. Whoever this guy, I don't know who this guy is. I've never seen him before or since, but I think he's up there with Toad, dude. The dude. <laughs> Bro, they were doing the color isolation effect. I didn't realize why this scene was so hard. I didn't realize why he looked the way he did. I'm realizing it now. This is obviously meant to represent Geo, dude. by the way. You know, dude, like he says that, right? I think, I'm not sure, honestly. I think it's Geo, dude. But like, man, I didn't know they did this effect. This is an effect that I do for music videos. You the city's where I'm from. Ladies pretty, I go dumb. My onyx has got you bleeding, brother do breeding. Oh, wait, it's an onyx. Never mind, it's not a Geo, dude. You heard what he said? He said, rather do breeding than do beating. Brock was actually a fucking pimp, and he never had to open his eyes. Rather do breeding than do beating. You act training, and I'm not surprised that I never have to open my eyes. What a great song. And this whole aesthetic, this ambience at the oh. end. I remember that video. Annotations were honestly a great feature. I feel like they could have they could have handled it so much better. Okay, people were abusing annotations. Sure. That doesn't mean you remove the feature. People abuse every feature on YouTube. The current like cards system sucks, dude. Bring back YouTube annotations. And these all used to be on Hi I'm Ron's channel. And he's fucking said nothing about them or nothing's ever come out. No information or anything like that has ever dropped. I'm just going through VidCon. Daily Grace. You guys know Grace Helbig? Her like channel died, then it came back, then it died. And I think she still makes YouTube videos on her dead channel, if I'm not mistaken. That's Hannah Hart, if I'm not mistaken. She never really got to realize her potential. She was just... It's, it's a sad story, honestly, if you really think about it. Because she could have been up there with the I Justines and with these kinds of people, but she didn't... She, I don't think she ever reached that legendary kind of OG YouTube girl status. I don't think she even reached Hannah Hart status. Hey, are you worried about street sound at all? No. Nah. You're like, nope. Dude, you should... Th th this audio is terrible, bro. This is definitely classic YouTube right here, bro. Dude. There was like no black people on YouTube at the time. I remember that. And the moment, the moment like three black people made successful YouTube channels, they all like changed the game and like white people, like the entirety of white culture on YouTube became cringe. Like nobody was able to dance like this. Like they were all being made fun of. Like it was a fucking slaughter. And nobody will ever talk about this because it's like anti-PC, but it's what happened. Hey bro, no one's making videos like this today. What a weird... People just turn on the camera and gave people a peek into their like real lives. This is real authentic shit. It's shit you don't get anymore. Now all you do, you go on the front page of YouTube and it's, Hey everyone, today we're going to be throwing a million people into a pit of a billion dollars and setting them all on fire and last person to survive gets to keep the money. Let's see how it goes. But before, be sure to like and subscribe. Like, that's all you see on YouTube now. I know I'm like, I'm like, look, you can, if you really dive deep, which is the whole point of the iceberg, right? I forgot we're like doing the iceberg shit. If you really dive deep, you can find examples of so many other YouTubers like Ron who were great and they just stopped uploading. It, you look at it in like today's context, if it was uploaded today, nobody would like it, nobody would care, everybody would be like, this is cringe or whatever. But back then it was amazing. And I think content that's amazing in an amazing time is more amazing than the amazing content in a bad time. Remember I said like you can find like whole ass animes uploaded to YouTube, right? And most of them are gone, but some of them are still there. To be fair, this anime sucks, but it's here. And I don't wanna like, I don't wanna make it seem like it's like all bad nowadays, right? Like people come up with some funny stuff and making like poking fun at our past and making fun of it is like all, it's part of the fun, you know? Nintendo YouTubers, this is straight fucking facts. YouTube is still great and it has a lot of great content, but it's not what it used to be, man. It's just not, yeah, yeah. Chris Chan, I feel fantastic. Salad fing fingers, pets cup. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Elsa Gate, Stampy Long Nose, swearing, and Blank Room Soup. ABI. I think they all belong in the same tier. Good job. Hour long advertisements. It's not like a scary intended like ARG kind of lore, like the soup room or whatever. But I remember when people are making like, oh, 
this is a deep web video where this person is being forced to eat their family. Bro, remember that shit? And it's just this video from YouTube. But the hour-long advertisements, I mean, that came and went and nobody really, I mean, people talked about it, but like, it wasn't really all that popular of a thing. I don't think it should be up here. I don't think that many people remember it. NSFW tutorial videos. There was just that dude who like showed his whole fucking asshole. So yeah, this is a, it's NSFW educational videos. Erratus is more of an internet phenomenon, more of an ARG, internet ARG than a YouTube thing. A lot of these, now that I think about it, a lot of these don't really belong here. YouTube cults is a good one, but you should be specific because there are YouTube cults. This may have happened once or twice, but not, it happened on Google Hangouts once actually, but not, I don't even, I'm not even about to get into that. Okay. This is actually a rabbit hole. I shouldn't speak on this. Okay, this is not a, like a, there's literally a, vid, there's a website you can go to that's like YouTube videos with zero views. And every time you refresh the thing, it shows you a new video that has zero views. This is dumb. There's plenty of illegal videos that are public on YouTube. Like, have you not seen like the street takeover, street racing videos and all that shit? The algorithm is sentient AI. This is a pretty dumb, like lowest level of the chart. It was pretty good up here actually. Okay, so this person definitely did this in like a very specific era. Bad Baby, Lil Tay, Whoa Vicky, Ajit Pai. They didn't focus on YouTube in its entirety. They're focusing on Zoe Berger. They're focusing on that era. J Station, people started talking about him a lot after the Zoe Berger era, but it's still, okay. Uh, Never mind. This guy just like he remembered a few things and then didn't bother to go through it all. Was Maximilian Must the same era as Lil Tay and all that stuff? Okay, I know it definitely was not the same era as Anita Sarkeesian. So this guy's just picking and choosing. This is funny right here to see like the red names. Ooh, low tier god. Oh, stay away from that one YouTuber slash streamer Brittany Venti. You don't want to watch Wings of Redemption. You don't know what you'll see if, if you watch his stream. Reply Girl definitely belongs in the YouTube uh, iceberg for sure. So this is the weird side of YouTube. Elsa Gate, that's a perfect or high like surface level for the weird side of YouTube, 100%. The moment you included Ben Drowned on here, which is not as popular as the Backrooms or Bill Wirtz, and Bill Wirtz does not need to be on here, but the moment you include Ben Drowned, you're gonna immediately go like, okay, ARGs, rabbit hole, internet conspiracy, internet mystery, all this stuff. You're gonna get into all that. There's no avoiding it. Am I missing something here? Unedited footage of a bear? Is this a, like a video where like a bear is like eating someone or something like doing something specific i don't know i'm not familiar with that one. Oh, poppy is a good one i feel stupid for not realizing that she should have been probably on the some of the other uh, icebergs as well i know i'm kind of discounting a lot of internet stuff rather than youtube stuff because i'm like it doesn't it's it's more it's broader than just youtube but i feel like something like sonic.exe should actually be on one of these uh icebergs because like that's where it existed more people watched the Sonic EXE videos on YouTube than actually played the ga game. I, I don't know any of these. Am I not like a, a super well versed in this community? I feel like I know a bit about it. I feel like I'm familiar with it. Wait, wait, where's all the, um, you know, uh, creepypasta old stuff, lazy masquerade, corpse husband, all that stuff. Where's all that? Okay, let's get out of the fucking weird side of YouTube and let's get into the wholesome side of YouTube. This first one is good. I don't think Wilbur Suit should be here. Wilbur Suit is not wholesome. He is overly and deceptively positive. Wholesome content requires a balance. He doesn't know how to balance. All of like the wholesome content the real content he gets is from collaborating with other streamers. And then he just has a lot of like fangirls or whatever because he looks like a fucking fanboy. And, and also like his his channel, the original channel, Suit House, that was not a wholesome channel at all. Yeah, okay. Tom Scott, number file. To remove Pyrocynical from here, Corridor Crew definitely, that, that's a very good choice to be on this list. I don't think Danny Gonzalez should be on here. I don't think Mudar should be on here either. And neither should Call Me Kevin. Call Me Kevin is the real estate guy, right? I think Review Bra is good. He should definitely be on here. And Hybrid Calisthenics. What a great choice. That's a great choice. I hate everything. Um, I don't even need to... Do I, should I say more? I don't think he's as bad as you might think his channel is like... I might make it out to be just if you don't know what his channel is. He's saying I hate everything as in like he hates like... He's critical of things that are, like actually deserve that criticism. He doesn't just talk about things that he hates. When he talked about who killed Captain Allen, he's like, I love this movie. There's a lot of heart, passion, all that. It was a very good video actually on that movie. He showed more love to that movie than any other YouTuber I've ever seen. 
Spiffing Brit. Huh. Is he a whole... I mean, he's a... He talks in, like, a very jolly tone. And he exploits YouTube a lot. He is a wholesome YouTuber. Get Slime Sickle out of here. Shigur? Anton Shigur? I don't know. I, I, it's kind of getting weird. Like, most of these people... Like, Chris Stuckman just makes fucking, like, movie reviews. He doesn't... He's not, like, making particularly wholesome content. There's not, like, a way to be super negative when making movie reviews, you know? And Nexpo does not belong on this... What do you do? Remove him, bro. Nardwar is a good one. But I don't think it's intent... Bro, get rid of this guy. Get rid of Rainbot and Lazy... What's going on? They should have been on the last uh, iceberg. Shafrilis can stay, but he, he should be... Oh, a white word. Super eye patch wolf should be removed. This guy is, he makes great videos, don't get me wrong. But it's dark and it leaves you feeling empty after you watch it. Lindsay Ellis, was she one of the good ones? I think she was. There's a lot of these like writer girls, right? Oh, screwing over Robin Williams, screaming internally, dragon lady bad. A beautiful hot mess. She's not a wholesome YouTuber. I, I don't think... I think she's actually one of the better YouTubers in this space. In the space of, like, female writer and, and like, reviewer people. But being better in the space still puts you at, like, a failing grade for, like, general YouTuber, you know? Again, she's fucking drinking, bro. Every fucking, every video essay made by girl, I've said it before, bro. You go to any video essay made by a girl, they're always drinking. And they always have to have some joke. I might need a drink to get through this one or something like that. It's the same video, bro. They all make the same damn video. Jack sucks at life. I think Jack's films was up there and I think he should, mm, sometimes he could, he should be there. No, yes, no. You just repeated yourself. You had that twice. I'm, I'm like, I don't want to make a, I don't want to make an iceberg because I think it would take too long. I'm thinking like, I don't want to make an iceberg because I don't want to take too long. But then I'm like, what if I just do what these guys do and just like go through and half-ass it, you know? Because they're doing it and they're getting a lot of upvotes, right? No, no, no. Uh, I don't think he's like relevant to the discussion. I don't. And she is is. A no. She's just like um, Lindsay Ellis, but just, I think she's even more cynical. Again, no. Um, this depends on where you are in life. If you're a cynical person, then you're going to watch all those videos and you're going to lose faith in humanity. But if you're not, you're going to watch it and you're going to restore your faith in humanity. Pat Mac, I don't know who that is, but Matt Pat, at least like his old videos, yeah, absolutely he belongs on here. I don't know who Odd Header is, but I know the Odd Ones Out should be on here. I don't know why Sid Snap is white on this list, just because she's like crude and lewd or whatever, but that's the whole point. Like she attracts like a very wholesome audience. Go to her comments, it's the most wholesome. People like Pokemon and all of them complain like, oh my god, everyone says so many like crude and sexual harassing remarks at me and I want to ban them and I want to create legislation that restricts freedom of speech and all this stuff because I don't like the way people talk about me on the internet. But Sid Snap like encourages it and she gets the kind of community that Pokimane claims that doesn't even exist on YouTube. She's like, you can't be a female and have a good community because the internet just sucks. Like she's such a little fucking crybaby. And she, earlier she was like, girls literally tell me that they have to pretend to be someone else and that they can't be them, their real selves on the internet because they're afraid of the comments they'd get. I'm like, the comments you're getting are literally because you're faking your personality because you're not authentic. You're authentic, if you're authentic like Sitsnap, you'll get a wholesome community. I'll literally go to her channel right now. She should be pink on this list. It's Sydney, it's uh, Gigix's wife. They got married. Okay, no intro, MILFs. Everybody loves MILFs, okay? So this, this is the kind of videos that she makes, right? She's inviting you to have like, uh, like gross comments of like, Oh, I'm, I'm jerking it watching your videos or whatever, right? Look at her comments. They're like poking fun at her and laughing along with her community stuff. She's not a mom yet. Maylene, I'm in danger. Let me turn my husband into a milk. That's a power move. Sydney's taste is one of the most culture tastes I've ever seen. Truly a female giga chad. Sydney simping for her friends for 11 minutes straight. A true woman of culture. Thank you for choosing to hire real artists instead of AI. Like people love her videos. Family-friendly content this platform needs. Like, she has a great, active, engaged audience 
of people that are all like in our comments, like laughing, like having a good time. Like she has the wholesome content that Pokimane claims she wants, but really she doesn't want. Because if Pokimane wanted this audience, she would have this audience. She wants the gross, pathetic, beta male, like loser simp audience. That's what she wants, it's what she gets. Nah, Sitsnap deserves wholesome creator of non-wholesome content. No, Sitsnap is not like a borderline, she makes this kind of content or whatever. No, dude, she is more wholesome than half the creators on this list. Carl Jobst, again, another one like uh, Coffeezilla. It's not wholesome watching all those fucking um, Billy Mitchell videos. Cause like on one hand, it's like, ah, oh, we're watching this video and glad to see Carl Jobst like standing up to him and winning. But it's like, this guy's a parasite that never goes away. Billy Mitchell and fucking uh, uh, Todd Rogers. Like they just, they don't, they don't go down. Super John Bombo. Isn't that the Balloons Tower Defense guy? Uh, this guy just, he talks in such a weird fucking way. Too much filler. Uncle Dane. Wow. Great choice. I completely forgot about Uncle Dane. Fantastic choice. This is a great uh, uh, iceberg. I know there's a lot of stupid uh, entries on here, but like, man, this is like, it reminds me, like, you, you have a lot of good choices on here. And Pesta. Interesting. Uh, uh, all right. Um, no. Andy the Fox sounds familiar. I know Internet Anarchist, and I don't think he should be on here. And that was good. I'm glad I went through that. That mellowed me out, made me feel good, remind me of all the great, wholesome content that's on YouTube today. Corridor Crew, what a great channel, man. They're really, they're really making good videos. They're really at their peak right now, Sam and Nico. And it was all new stuff, too. That was a great iceberg. Like, if you're talking about, like, YouTube in general as a whole, there's a lot of wholesome content you could have on there. I didn't see ASDF movie, um, I didn't, which was Tom Ska. I think I saw Tom Scott, but not, not Tom Ska. I didn't see the Laser Collection, which is, like, ASDF movie, Laser Collection, same sort of, you know, era. Um, I didn't see all, like, the stick fight animations, which again, same era. There's a lot of cool entries, but at the same time, you put fucking Nexpo. Dude, you might as well put fucking Keemstar on there. Actually, Keemstar does have some wholesome, not like any of the drama stuff, but he has some, like back in the day with the Halo trolling and like the whole Alki David stuff. That was pretty wholesome. That was a good iceberg. That put me in a good mood. Oh, n nah, dude, I'm not, I'm not about to do this. No, I'm, I'm going to sleep. Padilla and Ian Hecox meet. So that was in sixth grade. We were doing a science this. project. I didn't have any friends. So the teacher kind of assigned us to work on something together because I think everyone else had picked someone. We were the losers. <laughs> Funny how things just don't change. How? They didn't go into any detail. I remember from one of the um, Ian is Bored unboxings. Dude, I watched so many Ian is Bored videos. They honestly might have just been making shit up back then. They might have just said this. But they were assigned together for a project and they had to like draw a dumpster or something like that. And they just went really overboard with it, you know? Like they drew like it as the most like foul thing imaginable. And there's like people like scraping the dumpster with like gas masks and like hazmat suits. And even the guys in that hazmat suits are like laying dead on the ground around this dumpster. And it's such like an exaggerated, like really like childish view of what a dumpster is, you know? Like this like toxic waste kind of thing. This was Anthony's words. We just thought it was like the funniest thing in the whole world. And then we decided to like make videos and be friends, something like that. Dude, I know more about their childhoods than I know about my own. YouTube was really my childhood. Like my childhood was like a shared childhood with all these other YouTubers. This guy, he made some really good videos, but this was always his like magnum opus. And this is also around the time of Clay World, which that was an interesting little era of YouTube. I really liked that. I really liked all the stop motion claymation stuff that people were doing. Of course, people are still doing it, but they're not promoted like how they used to be. This is the totally final version. Okay, casual. Susan Ojeki is ruining YouTube. This is a very... Like, you gotta know this, bro. If you don't know this, then then you can't even qualify for the first level. I agree with this. Ooh, Scare PewDiePie Season 2. The footage has to exist out there. It's gotta exist. Someone someone should leak it. I mean, I guess I guess it's it was pretty big news. It was A lot of drama channels covered it. I don't want to go through all of these, you know? Like, I know what pretended to be... That's, that was the uh, CSI video, whatever. Mobile game, I mean, I guess a lot of people talk about mobile game advertisements on YouTube. Tanacon, that was a thing. Charlie Bit My Finger, uh, the OG Music, Boxy, 
So this is like older stuff, Coney 2012. Axel F. Crazy Frog has so many views for some reason. Oh, what, what is this? 3.9 billion views? How? You guys remember YouTube's old app? How they had the whole, they had a whole tab on the bottom literally dedicated to favorites. And they had a whole tab on the bottom dedicated to like the most viewed videos. And you could see, no, I think it was on top. I think it was like three. You could see like the most viewed videos like of the past month, of the past day, and like of all time or something like that. That was really weird. I think that's where, I don't know where everybody else found it, but that's where I first saw Charlie bit my finger. I'm like, why does this random ass video that these like two little babies have like a hundred million views for some reason? I don't know. I mean, it's still, oh wait, here it is. A hundred million people, probably more, probably like 500 million people at this point just found this video, you know, enthralling. He's so immersive or something. I don't know. I don't know why this blew up, honestly. Yo, look what I have downloaded on my computer as like a meme to use in videos or whatever. I feel like more people know about Lion Maker than about Mr. Anime. But now, you know, because anime popped off, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, no, definitely a lot more people know about Mr. Anime and Lion Maker than Temple OS. Damn, this was intense, dude. I still don't know what happened. I still don't know what was going on with this. I guess it was just such a mystery that like nobody really got to the bottom of it. Did people get to, did people figure out how these channels got hacked? Okay, Sniper Wolf. Sniper Wolf and Darman should be a, should be way higher than the Apollo Legend Suicide. Way higher. Wow, this actually is a really good iceberg right here. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff to go through. I don't see Machinima anywhere. I feel like Machinima should be up here with these two. This is something I see pretty often actually, which like a lot of people just assume that Machinima was just the name of the channel or the MCN rather, and then they own the channel. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it was. I, I don't know if like what the actual definition is. I don't even want to look it up. There's no fun in, in knowing every like little intricacy to everything and being right about everything. Just from using like context loops from back in the day and what people would call Machinimas, it was, it was less of a channel and more of a filmmaking technique where people would use in-game footage, like they'd use video games or like video game cutscenes or video game like theater mode and Halo and things like that, which is why Halo was so big on Machinima, to tell stories, to make films. If you want your game to like be popular on YouTube, you should have some kind of theater mode. Hey, this video was hilarious. This this part right here, this is the best part. That is such a sweet heart, Mario. Would you like to have sexual relations later on tonight? Yeah, how you like old crap I only meant to mess up your cart. That is it's such, such a, a sweet car, Master, Master Chief. Chief. I love the way that like the old text-to-speech voices sound. It's so nostalgic. GTA, bro, every time I see SA, I think sexual assault. GTA San Andreas myth videos. That's interesting because for the first thing I think about is hot coffee, the hot coffee mod. But I think that was real. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've been fooled this whole time, but I thought that was real, legit. Zoe Laverne. That sounds so familiar. Zoe or Zoe Laverne. Oh yeah, it's the girl that was like uh, crying when she got passed by Charlie D'Amelio or whatever in follower count on TikTok. That's so funny that like that's what she's gonna be known for forever. Okay, there's actually a lot of these. Amanda Todd, that was a girl that killed herself. But there's a lot of these that I don't really know. Like I only know like 20% of these. And uh, again, how the hell am I supposed to know what this is? This blew up recently. I don't know when this uh, iceberg chart was made, but especially after Corridor Crew, like this is, this popped off. And so did, no, Larry Lawton didn't really like ever pop off. He had like a steady growth, but, and I don't know why Gacha Tubers is down here either. Gacha Tubers should be, uh, people know about this shit. Whoa, Spanish SpongeBob MS Paint videos. I think I know what they're talking about, but I'm not sure. They should reference at some point, like all those like weird, just people like kids going on like Photoshop CS2 or some other drawing program and then Windows Movie Maker and putting together all these like gory edits of like Spongebob stuff like Spongebob in Saw or or like Spongebob robbing the bank when Boots shoots and kills Swiper from Dora. Uh, it was like this style of animation, a lot of them, but this is it. This is the video I'm looking for. <laughs> Why did they have to do that? Why did they have to replace the audio? That was some good audio, the original one. Bro, this is so stupid. 
Because we thought this was like the funniest thing in the world when we were little. Like we were laughing so hard. And this is like, there's like no humor in this. Oh, really, Patrick? Dude, this looked so like, I was so shocked. I'm like, this looks like the SpongeBob episode. I'm like, how did they do this? I was like mind blown on like how they even managed to accomplish this. It's such like a bad editing job though when you look at it. Like this? This was cool. This is a cool little drawing right here. And then if you notice, you, you won't notice this unless you like listen to it a few times, but he actually very subtly goes, yeah, at the very end. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's, it's actually not that subtle. The reason why I remember it being subtle is because we were laughing so hard that we didn't notice it until like we did and we were like, oh my God, I can't believe I was there. But I guess if you're like a normal adult and like you laugh at this for like one second and then stop, then you'll notice it. I don't know about this. I know the Tech It Realm, I know his YouTube channel, Minecraft channel. But I don't know about the fake YouTube mysteries. You guys remember when um, Joe Rogan, when he was first starting out, when he used to like fact check people? Like he still does it, but with his own understanding of stuff. He doesn't like live, like get him and Jamie to like team up on people the way they used to. Like Jamie really, god damn, he's a good researcher, bro. Like people think like, oh, Jamie's like really good nowadays. No, dude, they don't know what he used to be on, bro. He he was like on next level back then. I'm sure he's like really good at researching, but he just holds himself back. He was so fast, like in the middle of the conversation, in the middle of you saying what you were saying, he'd find. I, I mean, actually, I think Google was a lot more robust at showing you like a good blurb of whatever you're looking for back then. Nowadays, Google's like, it has really warped search results based off of like what political party is on top at the moment or whatever, or what people want other people to see all these advertisements, even in the search results that are not ads. Like back then, just Google used to be a lot more useful, you know? And so just looking at the first article on YouTube was actually, it was a lot more helpful than what it would be today. But I remember like it made a lot of people, it put them on edge, you know, it made them think that they're walking on eggshells. And it's better to just have like a raw conversation and let them speak their mind freely and like just get it, get it all out, right? And then you could fact check them later, you know, on like Dr. Rhonda Patrick, or whatever like her podcast when she comes on the joe rogan podcast then you can talk shit about the previous people but it, when the original guest is on there like you'd rather them be in their element i want to learn how to use vocaloid but um yeah that is a plan alt-right controversy this was like 2017 this wasn't that big of a deal john tron alt-right controversy this really wasn't anything okay a creepypasta reading channels i'm glad that's on here it, it's at least on one of them Newgrounds animation. This is a good, this is a good iceberg chart right here. I feel like in one of these two tiers, it should, there should be a lonely island, you know, do it on the ground stuff, you know? That's iconic to YouTube. Hey yo, daddy at three. Cause you know, the whole thing, but you know what should be in the um, enthusiast section? So everyone knows about Ram Ranch, right? There's a Ram Ranch cinematic universe. There's 300 different Ram Ranch songs. Deleted, obviously, but they were there and they'd all be like different versions of Ram Ranch with like different lyrics, but you know, the same sort of spirit. And this was there, like we we listened to this whole playlist. I don't see any like YouTube like feature stuff on here. Um, what happened to our study girl? Like that's cool and all, but if you already have this, like you can remove this from here. You don't need to have this here. What happened to our study girl is is enough. This is less YouTube and more internet as a whole. Like TikTok and like the the entire music community and all that. I get that a lot of people know about the Glob Go Gab Glab, but there's there's no reason to put it on here. It's like just another meme. It's just another meme in like a in in a time where it was just a slew of new memes every day that were all like equally popular. You're gonna put this in here. Where's like you know, Zia's is reaction and you know those girls reacting to that K-pop thing, or. ASAP Rocky, ASAP Forever, or like, uh, fucking, like everything on meme review. When meme review was at its peak, everything on meme review. You know what's something they should have? This is a good one, Maximilian Must Controversy, because this is actually kind of deep, but what's something they should have along the lines of hiding dislikes? I guess it's less popular, but it was more popular a lot earlier. They should include like pivotal moments in like, like the dislike ratio. Oh my God, the original ratio. Because you know how everyone says like, oh, you got ratioed. The original ratio, you guys remember this? When uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, like the trailer dropped and everyone disliked it because they were like, we're tired of all like the new wave Call of Duty, like futuristic shit, right? And then Battlefield 1's trailer dropped shortly afterwards and it was all like old, like World War One stuff. And everyone loved it. They gave it hella likes. And then 
they went all out and they're like, okay, because of the comparison between these two, we're going to like like bomb Battlefield 1 trailer and we're going to dislike bomb the uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare trailer. And I believe like the Infinite Warfare trailer became the most disliked YouTube video of all time aside from music videos because that doesn't really count. Like if you look at the most liked videos of all time, they're also the most disliked videos of all time. Like the fucking Despacito and all that shit, you know? What you really got to pay attention to is the ratios. And that was like the first like you know, like major mob ratio that I can remember. I miss all that, bro. I miss the old internet. I was like reminiscing about it, like in my dreams last night. And I'm still like, I miss when trolling was just a part of being on the internet. It wasn't like, oh, that person's a troll. Like as if there was a separation between people that use the internet and trolls on the internet. Or like people, oh, look at this person, this website called Kiwi Farms. Or like, nobody even thought about like there being a distinction between trolls and just normal people on the internet. Everyone was a troll. Honestly, dude, I miss Rebecca Black. Like the song was annoying, sure, but there's a certain there's a certain charm that it has now. I miss the old YouTube dads. I miss the old YouTube giga giga chad giga dads. This is so like this is perfect. This is a perfect meme. They pulled up like their channels was like made in like 2006, and and you're like oh this guy's a YouTube OG, but he had no videos. And then it's like 2012, their first and last video. They hit record, reduce their son's Xbox 360 to atoms, and then just stop recording, and and. You can only assume that they just went about their like daily routine the rest of the day, just like sitting on their porch, smoking a cigar or whatever. That was hard as fuck, dude. That was honestly inspirational. That inspires me, dude. I miss all the MLG stuff, man. It might just be, these nostalgic things might be tied to just the simple fact that I was a kid and the, the friends that I had around, the things that I was doing, because life itself was also really simple. It might be a reminder of the, the kind of things that I was feeling at that time. Because I have the nostalgic connection to Shrek is Love, Shrek is Life. Not the video. The video was like, video was kind of intense. But I remember back then Shrek is Love, Shrek is Life was actually just like a, um, a copy pasta. It was just like something that would like float around on like Reddit and Tumblr and things like that. I think the reason why I have a nostalgic connection to it is not because of the actual content. It is because like Nair showed it to me and we'd go around like, and I remember like us reading it while we're at like Atlantic Station and we're like seeing these like cool cars and we're eating like Belgian waffles and going and getting like the oversized Rice Krispie treats and like the giant like 20 pound Hershey bars and all that stuff. And we're just having a good time. I think that's why I have nostalgic connection to all this YouTube, st- like old YouTube stuff. Dude, literally in REC, we were like 11, 12 years old. Me and like four other people would all be singing this like all together at the same time. And like his um his how low one. That was intense to like rap together like to memorize all the lyrics. Dude, it's actually kinda tough nowadays to memorize lyrics to songs. Like the whole song. But back then it was pretty easy. Like if I listened to a song like three or four times, I knew every word. Like Nick Jones, I got my lunch fly a kite, drink some sprites, till we go to sleep tonight. Tick tock, found the rock, gonna knock this poser sock off. Whoa, they're purple. Whoa, whoa. You know how they say like your whole body replaces itself like every seven to ten years? right? Like every single cell in your body, including like your brain cells and all that stuff, it's all completely new cells, right? After like 10 years. But like, I don't know, man. I still feel like a little kid. I still feel like I like just heard this. I know all the lyrics. You know what's something I'd add to this? Probably at the enthusiast level as well. I would add aggressive Joe Rogan. Because nowadays he's like really cordial with everyone. Oh, and he doesn't do this anymore. There was this J-R-Q-E, not the J-R, Joe Rogan experience. It was Joe Rogan questions everything. And he would have, but nowadays he has people that he disagrees with. Like a lot of, I mean, he always had people that disagrees with, but now it's like people that are like on like the complete opposite end of like the political spectrum or whatever he'll have on there. And he kind of integrated this into the J-R-E. But back then he would have like anti-weed people or whatever. And he would just like go off on them. And he was like, he was pretty damn aggressive back then. Like, it's obviously not like a sustainable thing. And I, I get why I, why I stopped, but like, and I get why you integrated that into just the normal Joe Rogan experience. But there is a there is a time and place for an aggressive Joe Rogan. I would also add this, it's not even that old, seven years ago. I would add this to the YouTube iceberg as well. Not because it has like that many views or whatever, or it's like pivotal to YouTube. I just add just because I feel like it.
I wonder when it's going to get taken off because it's like you used to have N I G G E R in in titles, and I, I actually have some of my old videos private that have that in the title. I know if I make the video public now, it's going to uh, be rescanned by like YouTube's algorithm, and it's going to be removed immediately. You're allowed to say the N word like this on YouTube, but um, I wonder how long that's going to last. Here, look, if I go to my the frog channel okay also i feel like mentioning this don't get me wrong i love the way like the new uploader works but it's just so suboptimal like there's so many things that people use every single time when uploading that are just like hidden in menus and like the new studio in general like the new studio the way that they did everything i i'm actually a really big fan i love it i think it's amazing for the longest time it was just like an aesthetic change and it was missing like really basic features dude for like two years the new studio wouldn't even let you upload multiple videos at the same time but now i think they've caught up and i think it has like 80 85 percent of the features that it should have that were in the previous studio. But it's like, okay, let's say I try to upload a thing, right? First of all, the order of the pages is wrong. Video elements should be last. Second of all, a thin bar, like above the whole video, across the whole thing, showing you like, it's, it's a lot more satisfying to see that bar go because it really makes progress than it is to see a circle close. Um, I just canceled the upload, but if you really wanted to have like the peak satisfying like loading bar, you would do it the way that a torrent does it, where it shows a different color for the parts of the video that are uploaded. And because YouTube has um, encodings, you can even color code it by quality. So you can start off with like a red or even let people give people option to choose their own colors, but obviously YouTube's not gonna do that. They don't actually care about making the experience for creators that, you know, uh, you know, nice. And look, I get what happened with, with tags and I feel like that should also be part of the YouTube iceberg with all the, the long, long history of tag abuse, right? Because it's, it's the easiest mechanic to abuse on the platform. Forget YouTube, advertising in general, the meta of advertising revolves almost entirely around keyword analysis. If you give the option to allow me to choose what keywords my video is gonna have, separated by commas, very simple system, you're, you're opening yourself up to be exploited. However, it has a purpose and it has a lot of potential. And I think if it's encouraged in the right way and, and incentivized in the right way, it could have a lot of utility in search. But then again, YouTube does not care about search results. YouTube does not want you to actually see good search results anymore. Half the videos you see on search results are videos you've either already seen or just videos that show up and you're recommended. YouTube wants people to spend all their time on the trending page or recommended page so that way they can take you through the whole process and they can influence your own views rather than you choosing what you want to watch. Everyone at this point also just abuses the system by putting whatever tags they'd have in the tag section in the description. It's, it's a tricky spot to be in. Everyone knows YouTube does need to put more value in their tags rather than putting so much value, almost all their value in just the description contents. And it's, it's tricky. It's tricky to punish people or to decentivize people from abusing tags, right? But like I said, these YouTube executives don't know what they're doing. If I was in charge, I would at least give it a real honest attempt. I'd try stuff, I'd figure it out, right? But these guys just gave up. And it's because they're not actually creators. It's because they're not actually passionate about the platform. They just want to get their next paycheck. Ooh, I would also have these kinds of YouTube videos in the iceberg as well. Like maybe not this video specifically, it's not really all that popular, but you know, these kinds of videos. It's got the GTA sexual assault music in there. Physiognomy is a real thing. Like thank you FaZe for introducing me to that whole that word and, and all the depth that goes into it. Cause it's legit, man. Like that's definitely a Carl Johnson. There's no mistaking it. He cannot be named anything else. Scad shorts? Wait, this is so weird. I don't know about this. I've never seen this before. And I might be totally wrong, but Scad is Savannah College of Art and Design. I don't know if this is something else, but these are the colors. It's like the B. It's like the bumblebee, which is also the colors of SCAD. This is the college I went to for a year. I can't believe I don't know about this. I went to SCAD. But then again, this might not actually be SCAD. Like, this, this might be something else. Dude, this one we were involved with. Weird Minecraft animations. We were a part of this. You know what I feel like? I feel like you don't need to put Happy Tree Friends on a YouTube iceberg. I feel like if you put Mondo Media, you cover it. Because Mondo Media also includes dick figures. I don't know any of these. I know McSkillet, but uh... YTP Tennis, I think I know what that's talking about. Did Review Bra have a stalker? Is this referring to the video of him in the car? Or was there something I'm not aware of? I, I don't, I, every one of these that I recognize are more internet phenomena rather than YouTube phenomena. 
There's a lot of people that do hentai reviews. It's literally Sid Snap, Sydney does hentai reviews. But I, I really don't know most of these things. Like almost all of these. Pingu 2019 gore? I know about the Pingu MLG videos. I know Mr. Black Darkness, but I thought I would know a lot more of these. I thought I'm like really, really familiar with like the inner workings. Of, like, I, I thought I'm like super well versed on this stuff. I guess I'm actually not as much of an expert in this stuff as I thought I was. You know what I haven't seen in a long time? I don't think this is on Meat Canyon. I think this is a different channel. Maybe it's on Meat Canyon. But that video of like Steve like raping the creeper. Remember that one? Yeah, look at this. Police shoot at Deputy Kyle uh, Dylan Dink Heller, Lawrence County, Georgia. I live in Georgia. I don't know. I've never seen that before. Okay, I've heard of none of these. Again, this one's not like a big deal. There's plenty of unlisted illegal videos. Um, and this one is still up in the air. I, I really hope this is true. Oh yeah, I was showing the um the thing. Look, so this one, I'm afraid it's gonna get banned if I, yeah, I had like one disclaimer here and then another disclaimer, like just to cover all my bases, you know? Remember the video of like the what's inside thing of like Lincoln putting the grenade in there and then they actually, they reviewed later on that they actually shot the grenade from a distance and that's why there was a cut. Yeah, so I just decided to do like a simple little like Instagram edit, you know? Okay, now set the grenade inside of there, but do not let go of that lever yet. Just set it in there carefully. Oh! That was crazy. That was really fun. <laughs> Watching Lincoln explode everywhere. Oh. I don't know why I did that. Oh my God. I'm gonna have to blur this channel name. I was promoting my SoundCloud. This is a little like remix thing that I did. This is another YTP that I made. It was a super hot fire YTP, just like how everyone else made one. So like you could see like even in my like first video on this channel, I was already like deep into YouTube, like uploading hella. I, I still wish I had all my older videos. That's why I mentioned earlier, I wish YouTube keeps like the archive. I remember when I uploaded like a, uh, like Faison's school project to my YouTube channel, cause he came through to have me like edit the video for him. It's so funny cause now he like makes music videos and he's making money from editing. How the, how the tables have turned, the young Padawan. I feel like the master of my young Padawan became like a true Jedi, you know? And I remember like in his class, like, cause I had hella videos like this. They're all gone now. He had the video like playing, cause you know how they put the video up on YouTube, like the teacher will put it up. So when the video was done, the autoplay would start and all the suggested videos, all the videos on the side were all like hella, like N-word, like 9-11, like all this stuff in like the middle of their class. These videos can exist if they were private from back then, which a lot of videos like this exist. I'm going to download it. I don't want YouTube to like manually come through or whatever. Someone sees this video, they're gonna check the URL somehow. They're gonna like, I, I don't, I don't wanna deal with it. I'm literally just about to delete it. I'm glad I have it downloaded because it was some OG prank calls that we did using the original leaked contact list that's gone now. Wow, what a, this is this would be a trip down memory lane to watch actually. But, um, and you know what? I'll go ahead and make this video public. I'm probably gonna get a strike and this video is probably gonna get taken down. Let me age restrict it. Let me age restrict it real quick. All right, it's age restricted. I'm probably gonna get a strike on this video. I don't mind getting a strike on this last, this very last one from that era and then just having it taken down and all my videos be newer videos. This was a good iceberg, actually. It was a good one. Good job, whoever made that. Oh, there should have been um, MCN stuff on there. I didn't see any MCN stuff or like the old, like, um, that was an interesting little thing. That should have been on the iceberg. That should have been near the top though. So the way it worked is is way back when you had to be approved to be part of the YouTube partner program. You couldn't just verify your phone number and then get in. And when it was difficult to get approved, um, the, your best shot of making it happen was actually just signing to an MCN, which is also, it's, it's a problem for YouTube because YouTube required a tax ID, which it, like motherfucker, 10 year olds don't pay taxes. And still to this day, like I never uh, pay taxes in any of like the any.tv PayPal, you know, transactions that I got. To be fair, those are all on my old PayPal and that's been locked in PayPal jail for like 10 years now. But um, there is stuff you could have in the iceberg about like MCN drama, like MCN scam people, cause they were straight scams. And, and they made it really easy to uh, join the YouTube partner program uh, like easier and easier as it went on uh, up until like 2016 and that's when i think 2016 was peak i think when it came to like how easy how low the barrier to entry was on making it in youtube 2016 was as low as it possibly was that was the best time to start making youtube videos 
And then it started to get a lot more difficult. And, you know, they started to add all these restrictions. Oh, you have to have 1,000 subs and uh, have 4,000 watch hours. But that's not a difficult thing. Yeah, and, and people wonder why so many people consider 2016 such a great year. It might have something to do with the fact that those two are correlated. It might have something to do with the fact that, like, all the great art that came out in 2016 was as a result of there being such a low barrier to entry to create art. It wasn't just about the, your ability to create. It was also the freedom that YouTube gave its creators in 2016 because they were getting more and more relaxed on copyright as time went on, but they were also getting more and more trigger happy and angry at people who violated community guidelines and also more vague with community guidelines as time went on. So it was like the lowest point where you could get away with the most stuff. Right now, copyright is a little better than it was in 2016. I'll admit it. it it's it's The system has gotten not even a little better. It's gotten pretty damn good now. But the community guidelines aspect of YouTube is horrendous. It's atrocious. It's god-awful. You know how nowadays you have all these restrictions if you get a strike? Back then, they let you up. Even if you had two strikes on your channel, there was no restrictions from doing anything. Of course, monetization was kind of up in there depending on what channel it was. I mean, regardless. But, like, you could still upload as many videos as you wanted. They, they let me upload when I had my channel like basically wiped out 149 videos that were removed there were 40 videos left i had like 189 total videos 149 of them were removed and it was actually just two copyright strikes that claimed my entire channel basically and even after that i had two strikes and they were both going to expire after six months they still let me upload videos after that as many as i wanted shortly after that like while that was happening that was when they instituted the whole six strike system or i guess five right because if you reach five at any point then you're screwed which is three community guideline strikes and three copyright strikes if you reach three on any of these then you get terminated but you can have two strikes in community guidelines or two strikes in copyright and you'll still be fine and now they have like it's a complicated system they give warnings now which i have warnings on all of my channels but yeah it, I've, I've had an interesting i've had an interesting youtube career i've really seen quite a lot with youtube like I, I tried a bunch of different things i've been trying to make content for so long i remember i tried to be trendy at one point like i like remember when the effective power text message was a thing where you send someone that like arabic text and then effective power and it crashes their phone i remember like when that popped off i made a video on it and it got like twelve thousand views because i made it like immediately i was so fast i didn't even bother to edit using final cut i made it straight up in imovie oh look at this 2013 to 2014 this was and this is actually one of my newer channels i had a lot of older channels back in the day so yeah i was a little kid uploading YouTube videos and just trying to see where it took me. And still, like, even a lot of people are not going to believe me when I tell them I started uploading in, like, 2008, 2009 on, like, shared channels with, like, me, Zoib, Isan, me and Nair on, like, Lubu Void, but he would manage that whole thing. All that stuff is, like, completely erased. I did a really damn good job of erasing all of it because I was so embarrassed and so self-conscious. And I understood well enough to know, like, okay, I got to be real quick. I have to have my timing on point. They say like nothing gets removed from the internet, but I'll make sure that they're wrong about that. And I was kind of right. You really can remove stuff from the internet if you go hard enough. So the history of it is gone. The proof that I have of those old channels and all that stuff, all that is gone. But I mean, I still have some, and my mom has some too, but I really was a YouTube OG, whether you guys believe me or not. I miss those days, man. I miss the days of VGHS of like where, where Quarter Crew, Brandon J. Law, and rocket jump like Freddie Wong, like everyone together as one, just kicking it and making YouTube videos and like living life to the fullest, you know? So back in uh, uh, Sam, Nico and I moved into this, this loft right here to do post-production on for eight months. And there's this down here that's built into this entire second story. <laughs> I missed this, dude. I miss the YouTube when it was just a bunch of regular dudes just just making funny videos. And there are people that obviously evolved it, right? Like the Filthy Frank era, Max Mofo, and all these people, iDubs, that like took it to the next level. But like I, I feel like other people would also miss it too if they were a part of it. I feel like the general person, if they watched content like this, they'd be like, damn, I, I, I want to see more of this. Because like these guys are like the equivalent of like my friend group when we just hang out, we just kick it. Damn Believe right, that's the way to do it. Welcome to your main event, Brent Driver! 
and of course because they're filmmakers they gotta make it all cinematic and shit. Bro, this is legendary. I remember the first time I saw this. I was losing my mind. These guys were also really at... big inspirations for me back in the day. Um, not like so much as inspirations for like my desire to create content. I had already formed that in my formative years, but these guys inspired me in like what direction I wanted to take with YouTube. When Mr. Beast like talks about like people, people assume this is just like, you know, normal, like successful person talk. But when he talks about like, I was around all these other people and no one had the passion that I did. No one cared about this thing the way I did. And I feel that I, I recognize that. I'm like, damn, I feel the same way. I know exactly what you're talking about. This is what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to find other people. I'm, I'm always looking, I'm looking every day to like build a team of people who also are passionate about content the way that I am. Even if the content we make is as simple as like, cause this shit, like you don't think about like this content as being iconic. Bro, on Brandon J. Law's channel, who's like uh, at this point a pioneer of VFX, it's Freddie Wong making a YouTube like a uh, VFX tutorial. It's, it's as simple as like, you know, that, that Mike Karen formula. You take all the hit makers, you put them all in the same place and you just see what happens. I'm not even doing it for like a specific goal, whatever. Oh, we got to make these kinds of videos or whatever. It's like, nah, just bring me all the passionate people. Let's all be in one spot. And, and I know whatever happens, it doesn't matter what happens, whatever happens, it will be iconic and we remember for the ages, especially with like this kind of shit right here. Like you look at what they were doing back then, right? With VGHS. And then you realize like, oh my God, like this is how you tell the character arc to life. This is how you tell the real, back in the day, like the guy who played Law, was just the guy from like five second films, uh, the guy who played Ace, like in, in VGHS is now the guy who plays Shazam in like that, I don't know, I think it's Marvel, right? Is it Marvel or DC? Joanna Brady was just like an up and coming actress from Atlanta. She played Jenny Matrix in, v in VGHS now. She's like one of the stars in Quantico and she's like a pretty big actress now. She hasn't really blown up the way that she could have, but she did find a lot of fame and success after VGHS. And this is what she looked like back in the VGHS days. She looked like a, old school, you know, brunette turned blonde YouTuber. Another one of these like I Justine looking girls, you know? People don't think about it like that. People see the aftermath after the fact and they go like, man, imagine if I worked on set on like VGHS or something like that. But I was there in the moment because I, I was passionate about it. I wasn't on set with V, I'm not saying that, but I, when I'm watching this, I'm like, I'm thinking that in the moment, I'm at peak hype while it's happening because I love the process. And then, after the fact, the things that I tell people to do, they message me later on. They go like, man, we should have done this. And it happens so consistently because when you get all these people that are passionate about this thing and you get them all together, it really doesn't matter what happens. At that point in VGHS, they were all just like a bunch of basically like no names in the industry. Now they're all huge. Duh, obviously. And like people, people like they see like this kind of stuff. Like, oh, VGHS, not a big show. They won't take it seriously. How could you not? Look at the track record of YouTube repeatedly over and over and over again, outclassing everything else, not only on TV, but on the rest of the internet. Yeah, man, look, um, I, I would make this like a separate video, but if you're watching this and, and you're passionate about YouTube, like truly passionate, and you have some essence on YouTube that you love, whether it be old YouTube, like how I love it, or some creators nowadays that you're like, man, these guys really make great videos and you wanna make videos like that. If you have something like that and you have like a real desire to do it, regardless of whether or not you'll make money, but we'll make money anyways, don't get it fucked up. But you had that passion, right? To where whether or not it made money in the first place, you would still do it. Hit me up for real, message me on Discord, on Instagram. Those really the only two places that I check, but I check both regularly so you could DM me in both places and fucking join the team, bro. Join the team, hop on, I'm here. I don't care, like everyone's so scared to message everyone. Like what's gonna, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? So take that philosophy, like message me. It doesn't matter if in the future I have, you know, 100,000 subscribers and you're just starting out and you have one subscriber, zero subscribers, you just made your channel. If you are passionate about it, message me. Tell me like your story, what you want out of this. I'm, I don't care subscriber count. I don't care about any of this stuff. I just want to make content with people that are passionate. That's all I care about. I want to have fun and have these laughs and go around and on camera and do all this stuff. I want to experience that kind of life that I wanted when I was a kid. Everybody, like, they wanted to grow up to be like an astronaut or whatever. Dude, as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a YouTuber. And I still want to be a YouTuber. And my passion for it has been reinvigorated now. And if you feel that, and if you're down 
to like go like, hey, what else is there to do in life other than chase your dreams? Let me go chase my dreams. And you're down to like come through like, okay, I'm going to drop this stuff, uh, go find a remote job, hustle, and then move to where like come come with me on my travels, join the pirate crew. We're going to go find the one piece. Like if, if you're down for this kind of thing, then let me know. Message me. Join the crew. This is not about money. Like I don't want people joining because they want money. In fact, I will... Like just to weed out the people that want money, I will intentionally ensure that none of us, me included, will ever make anything more than like five figures a month. That's it. That's the most we'd make off of this kind of thing. Of course, like, you know, I'm not going to like lock you in as some contract. Oh, you cannot. Like if you go into some other business or whatever and you make a bunch of money in some other business, then go for it. But like I want to surround myself with people who are genuinely passionate about making content. And it's really difficult to find around me, especially nowadays. I should have done it a long time ago because a lot of more people had that passion because it was a different world back then. It was a more authentic world. But if there are people out there that see this, that resonate with what I'm saying, hit me up, bro. Join me. Let's fucking make it happen.